Hello all, we're going to be installing Elembix um, on a VPS and it's going to be powered by a Phoenix D. So Phoenix D is going to be the funding source for those of you who don't know. Phoenix D is a really neat solution for people who want a self-custodial solution and they want a node but they don't have to manage their own channels. Async, the company behind Phoenix D, they manage the channels for you and do some auto channel balancing. So really great um, service, very useful for people who want a self-custodial solution. Um, we're going to install Phoenix D LM bits, and then we're going to set the DNS. Um, we're going to put this on a subdomain, the LM bits, and then we're going to install them run Caddy. And Caddy's going to help do the reverse proxy to the URL. Uh, a lot. This is mostly based on a great um, guide by Avet. We're going to be using Screen to set up separate little terminals inside terminal um, on the VPS, which we're going to run. But in Avet's uh, guide. Um, she sets up some system D files, so this is a really good resource. I'll link this actually in the in in the guide I made, because um, uh, system D files are a little bit more professional. Really, uh, the screen way of doing it with screen is a little bit more hacky, but it'll work for now. Um, so we're going to be running on Luna Node. Luna Node's great because you can pay in Bitcoin, and uh, I've already spun up a VPS. It's very easy to do. Just create machine and then give it a name. You can go for the cheapest machine. This is on Ubuntu 2404 because um, we're going to be using the LMBits install script which requires uh, us to use a Debian based system. So first thing we're going to do is go into terminal ssh ubuntu at the IP address and then we have to give it the password. Um, so let's just work our way through the guide, shall we? So first thing we're going to do is install Phoenix D. We're going to go and get the, the latest version of Phoenix D. And we're going to go for the Linux x64. Copy link address. And then we can see the first thing is wget. So that'll go and fetch the file um, for, our, for our server. There we go. And then the next thing we need to do is install uh, unzip because this is a, a zip file. So we can unzip it. And then unzip. Let's do ls and we can see what we downloaded. There we go, the Phoenix, Phoenix file here. So unzip and then ph, press tab, do the rest for me. And it's going to unzip that for me. Now I'm going to cd into the folder. So if I do ls again, we can see we have a folder. I'm going to cd into that folder. And then I need to make uh, Phoenix D and the Phoenix D client executable. There we go. And the same for Phoenix D client. There we are. And then we're going to run Phoenix D in, oh no that's not correct, sorry that's from something else, we're just going to run Phoenix D, I'll have to get rid of this standalone bit here, um, you won't have that there, because I'll get rid of that. I'm going to run Phoenix D, oh, dot backslash, there we go, I understand. Um, so what does it say? It says, this software is self-custodial, if we're full control, and responsibility over your funds. Your 12 word seed is located here. So we're actually going to make a weed note of that and put it in here in case we need it a little bit later on. Do not share the seed with other people. Um, blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, so I understand. And then the next bit is liquidity management is fully automated. Thank goodness. When receiving a lightning payment that doesn't fit in your existing channel, if the payment amount is too large to cover the mining fees and service fees for automated liquidity, then the channel will be created or enlarged straight away. So this is just telling you something about how it like auto manages those channels. Um, one little thing you will find with Phoenix D is you need to get, I think it's 20,000 sats onto the node before you can actually do outbound payments. And I think that's just like a, a way of ensuring that there's enough money on there for those channels but then once you've got that on there it just takes care of itself it's a dream to work with press any key T to continue okay so now phoenix d is running look at that um and it's running on localhost and it's port 9740 i'm actually going to close that because i want to be able to use terminal to do the rest of the 
tutorial. Um, so I'm going to run it in screen. Uh, Phoenix D. There we go. And then Control A D out of that. Um, why is this here? I think I copy and pasted from a different tutorial. I'll uh, I'll get rid of that. We don't need that <laughs> either. Um, what we do need though from the Phoenix D client, yeah, I copied and pasted this from the bolts tutorial I did before, hence why there's uh, a few things in there which shouldn't be in there. I'll edit those um, so you won't have that problem. The Phoenix D client, what do we need to get from that? Um, actually, I think everything's stored via less. Ah, yeah, right there. Let's go here. That's what we need to do, isn't it? CD, there we are, ls, what have we got in here? Okay, so we've got our seed, so I can do cat seed dot dat, and there's our seed, I'm going to make a note of that, put that somewhere safe. And then the other thing we can do is cat phoenix. I can never spell phoenix. Phoenix dot conf, and that gives us our key to be able to plug LM bits into Phoenix. So we're going to make a note of that too. Okay, um, I'm going to clear just because it's uh, clear the terminal there. Um, what next? What's next on the agenda? We've got Phoenix D running. Fantastic. I need to edit this. Um, we're not going to install LM bits first of all. First of all, we're going to set up the DNS record because it takes a, a few minutes to propagate. So I'm just going to go over to my DNS, um, to my uh, domain provider, GoDaddy, and then in here add a new record. And I'm going to go for an A record and I'm going to call it ba -ba -ba -bum, Phoenix D, or just Phoenix, I'll do. And then the value is the IP address and then we want to propagate that in 600 seconds yeah that's alright that's good save cool so I verified that um, and that's just gonna chug away propagating for me and where are we so while that's doing that, we can install LM bits. I'm just going to grab this bash script here. I'm going to just copy and paste that whole thing. I'm going to CD first, back to the home. And then copy and paste that. That's going to install LM bits for us. So it's... Um, Installing Python Python 3.9, which is what we need, and then the dependencies, and then it's installing Poetry. It's creating the virtual environment for Poetry, and in a moment it should install the dependencies, which LM bits needs. Well, first it's going to clone the LM bits project. Switching to main branch. Now it's installing all the dependencies. And then three, two, one, boom. Go on. Ah, no, there we are. Alan Bits is up and running. Fantastic. I'm actually going to shut it down. Um, actually, first, we can test that it's running by going to this IP address. Oh, port 5000, not 4000. Yep, and it's running. Great. I'm going to control C to shut that down. I'm going to create a new screen. And then I'm going to go to copy this thing here. This won't be here in a few weeks because we can actually put this in our bash script, but for now I have to because I forgot to add it. And then I can just run that bash script again. There we go. 
that's up and running so I'm going to control a D out of that next we've got to set up uh, caddy so we're going to install caddy copy this paste it in there hit enter it's just a bunch of copying and pasting There we go. I'm going to stop Caddy just in case it's running. I'm going to create another screen. And then I'm going to add my reverse proxy script in here. Um, in Yvette's tutorial, she actually creates a Caddy file, which is a pre preferred way of doing it, really. Um, but yeah, we can just do it with this one liner as well. That's fine. All right. And what was the URL? It's Phoenix, spelled correctly, dot conduct dot com. All looking good. Enter. Oh, getting a few errors. This is because it hasn't propagated yet. Um, so it can't issue the secure certificate. Uh, so if we go to Phoenix dot conduct conduct then it's not going to work so we're going to have to wait a few minutes for that to sort itself out I would say um, while we're waiting for that to sort itself out we can actually get our funding source set up Phoenix D set up and set up our super user Now I would say even if you're the only user of your LM bits install, um, or you know if you're running it for friends, family, whatever, try not to use your super user as your day-to-day -day, um, as your day-to-day -day wallet and account, because the super user has access to all the administrative parts of LM bits, and we don't really want that. So create your own user, install the extensions you want, and then just use a, a user, um, use an account just like any other user would on your LM bits install. Um, right, so what are we doing? We're going to Phoenix D, and there we are. There's the um, lo it's running on localhost 9740. That's correct. And then we just grab this key, and we pop that in there. Hit save, and then restart server. Go to the wallet. Might take a second. There we go, and it's back up. And then create invoice. Boom, got an invoice. So it's working, it's connected to Phoenix D. I can pay that invoice. Look at that, so fast. Lightning fast, some might say. So yeah, working. Um, but as I said, you really do want to set up a separate user because, I mean, you could just add an amount here because that's, you know, one of the things you can do as a super user. Um, what I will do, actually, is I'll create another user for myself to use. Oh, that's not going to work because I'm logged in. Um, pop that in there. Create new wallet. Ben's wallet. understand then what I'm going to do is go back to the super user account because I just want to use this server for myself click on users and then toggle this little thing off here and now no one else can create a user account on my Ellen bits install so it stops people just randomly finding your Ellen bits and creating loads of user accounts on there um, should we see if it's done its thing yes it has brilliant so now I can log in with Hmm. Let's have a little look. In fact, let's be clever. And for this user, okay, username Ben. Set password qwerty one two three four. Qwerty one two three four. 
Oh, where the T? There we go. Good stuff. Um, we can close this, and then here, Ben, where T? One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I like double typed a letter then by accident. Oh, it's ridiculous. Silly me. Well, I'm still logged in here as the uh, as the as the super user, so I can just go ahead and make myself another user. It's a bit ridiculous, but there we are. Um, yeah. Mm, let's grab this. Oh, uh, actually, I could do it here, couldn't I? If I just refresh. Nope. Did I? I'm not save. No, I didn't save. Let's save that. Yeah, I can just do it here. Silly me. Um, create a user. Ben. Ben's. I understand. And I can set the password over here. Ben's. That's it, isn't it? Set password. QWERTY. QWERTY. One, two, three, four. QWERTY. T one two three four. Change password. I know what I didn't do. In the username section here, when I typed in men's three Zs, I didn't hit on update account. That's why I went wrong. Um, okay. So now I should be able to log out. Yep. Log back in. Ben and then core. Oh. One two three, Qwerty. One two three four. There we are. I'm in. It worked. Um, and then, obviously, first thing I'm going to do is go and change the theme. To use this lovely gradient option we've got. Look at that. Gorgeous. Uh, and we're done. Yeah, we can. Yeah, accept payments. As I said, you got to get twenty thousand sats in there before you can actually send funds out. So we can't really demo that. But it's uh, it's a great solution. Running on Phoenix D, you you know self custodial Lightning node with LM bits installed. Um, you can make use of all the extensions. So it's pretty cool actually because I got this IP address here. It means I can be logged in on two accounts without having to use a, a private browser. Uh, so if I go to extensions here and I want my users to have access to the Spotify jukebox extension, I click manage install the latest version and now this user when they go to extensions they're the extensions which they have access to only the super user can install extensions and we're done so yeah um, I don't think there's anything else to cover if you want a more com comprehensive guide then go check out um, a vet's guide as I said I'll put this link in my little guide here thanks for watching Enjoy Phoenix D. Spectacular. Cheers. Bye.